Hi, I'm Paris, and as my sweet potato slips are getting ready for the garden, I decided maybe I ought to check out the soil that I'm going to be planting them into. I ordered the Rapitest soil test kit after seeing lots of good reviews on Amazon, especially one where the reviewer mentioned that they had sent their soil in to Texas A&M Extension for testing, and it showed the results were pretty close to what they saw using this kit. For $15, I can get 10 separate testings of pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. You can find out more about this kit at the link down below this video. On the back of the instruction card, there's a brief description of why it's important to test for those particular things. And then inside, there's lots more information about how to conduct the tests and the meaning of the results. And then they've included a little pamphlet that tells you I think the pH levels that most plants you might be growing in your garden like to grow in. For example, sweet potato like to grow in a slightly acidic soil with the pH of 5.5 to 6. So I'll find out today how welcoming my garden soil will be to the sweet potato slips. And maybe there's an easy way to alter the pH in the soil if I need to make it a little more acidic so they'll grow better. The way these test kits work, the pH test is a little different from the others. The pH test, I'm going to get a little bit of soil and put it in the bottom of the container, add distilled water to the rest, and then take a capsule. You can see I have different colored capsules here. The one that matches the color of the container. One capsule, open it over the top, shake it up real well, wait the specified amount of time, and then compare the color that shows up here with my mixture compared to these pH levels. And this isn't a pH meter, so it's not going to give me an exact number, more a close approximation. And again, not exact numbers, more a general idea based on the color that matches. Here's where I'm getting the soil from for my first test. Say to go down about four inches to get the soil, and I'm not supposed to have any organic material in it, like little pieces of grass or plants or weeds. Let me see what I can do. I may have to pick them out. Really don't need much for this first one for the pH test. Just about at the first grasshopper of the year. Whoa, there he goes. Now I'm not supposed to touch the soil, but I'm supposed to use a spoon or some instrument to make sure it's thoroughly ground down and then take some of that and put it into this side of this container, just to that fill line. It's only about that much. I have lots of organic material in here. I think normally that's a good thing. No earthworms though. But when I first dug up that corner of the yard to put in the garden and had some nice soil brought in, we noticed there were no earthworms. So we went and bought some earthworms at the nursery when the kids were little. And I had them help distribute the earthworms. While I'm working on this, you can take a look at that. Of course it's a lie. Such we, a silly thing to say. We need it to be a lie. Yes. They're so, going to help so our garden. Okay, ready to put the soil in here. A little bit more. Next step is to take one of the green capsules and to open it up and dump the powder into this spot on top of the soil. This is a little tricky. most of the powder in. So I've got my soil topped by the powder and now using the dropper I'm going to add distilled water to get it up to this fill line here using the included dropper. I'm going to take a few dropperfuls. Got the water in it, now put on the cap completely because you're going to be shaking it and the water will come out around the edges otherwise then shake thoroughly and give it a minute for the soil to settle to the bottom and see what color we're working with that's one minute let's take a look it says natural sunlight is the best i see brown water i'm gonna need to get over to the window i think this looks brown right I asked my daughter to take a look at it with her younger eyes and she agreed brown was the closest match. So that gives me a pH of about 6.5, slightly acidic. The sweet potato is like 5.5 to 6. And from what I understand, most plants will grow okay within a one pH variation of the range that they like. So this 
could be a little more acidic in order to get the plants to grow a little better, but they should grow okay the way it is now. For the other three tests, they need a larger sample. So they recommend one cup of soil mixed with five cups of water in a big bowl. They said so long as the proportions remain the same, you can use a differing amount. So I don't have a bowl that large. I'm gonna do half a cup of soil with five half cups of water. And again, don't touch the soil, but make sure it doesn't have lots of organic matter in it. I have my five half cups of water or two and a half cups of water. And my half cup of soil I've gone through and with the spoon taken out all the chunky things, including any organic material I could find. And I'm now going to add the half cup of soil to the bowl and stir it for a full minute. I think the last time I did this I was maybe five years old, making mud pies. Okay, now I need to let this sit and let the soil settle out of it. That can take as little as half an hour if I have very sandy soil, which I don't, up to 24 hours with very clay and fine soil. So I guess I'll see how my soil is. When it gets mostly clear, I will continue the test. And I'm back. It's the next day. I've got my daughter Roxana with me. She did a very similar test, right? Mm -hmm. In a science class in high school. Yes. AP Environmental Science. Okay, but there was a person who sort of took charge right in your group, so... Yeah, so I was there when it was happening, but I wasn't the one doing You didn't get the hands-on experience. So she right. wanted to do the experiment, so she's going to help me out here. And I've got my bowl. This is from yesterday, so this is about 23 hours it's had to settle. Look at how much soil is still in the water. Wow. The most of it has settled out, but I guess I have very clay soil, which uh, isn't good for sweet potatoes, unfortunately. They like a uh, sandy, fluffy type soil. But let's take a look at nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash levels. We've got the three kits here. So we're going to, I'll help you out with this if you want to grab the dropper. You're going to want to take the liquid, it says, from the top. Try not to pick up the sediment. So try to just get the fluid at the top. We're going to put it in each of these compartments. We put it on both sides, including the side that already has the uh, color strip. And you think, well, why are you going to put it in there? Apparently that compensates for the cloudiness mm -hmm. of the suspended soil. So it makes it even on both sides. So let's start with this one. And then people have trouble with these tipping over very easily when you, you're trying to put the capsules in. So between the two of us, we can manage this. Okay, we've got to fill up the test side <clears throat> and the reference side to the fill line, which is right there. All right. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So from here? Yep. From somewhere in the top inch, I would say. And it's going to take a, a lot of squirts, I'll just tell you. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to fill it com yeah, completely if you can. I feel like I ought to just dip it in there and scoop the stuff up. They don't say to do it that way. We need to fill this now, which is going to take you about Even five longer. times as many squirts. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the nitrogen container filled up. We're going to fill them all, then put the appropriate uh, capsule powders in it, and then do the shaking. Okay, we've filled up all the test chambers, and now it's time to get the capsules and put the powder in. Let's bring this over. This is the nitrogen test. And can you hold on to that? Because it's tall and narrow and so easy to bump over. So I'm going to open this over it. Okay. You ready? Here you can see the powder still floating on the top. I'm going to cap this and then we start shaking. Now we shake them for about a minute and hopefully nothing comes splashing out here. Let's go. Actually it says shake thoroughly. I don't know we have to do it for a whole minute. I guess until you don't see white powder floating in it. I still see white powder. This is what science is all about. <laughs> this is how they discovered maracas. What are we thinking? Oh, I got color changes happening already. But don't look yet. You got to wait 10 minutes. You think it's good? All dissolved? I think so. Okay. We put them here. We don't peak and we'll be back in 10 minutes to see what our nitrogen, phosphorus and potash levels are in that soil. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. We'll give you our assessment and then I'll put all of these in the window so you can make your own assessment. This is the nitrogen. It's clear. It is, yeah. Which which means what? N0 depleted. 
That means there's no nitrogen in the soil. Oh. Nitrogen's a good thing for plants. Oh. We don't have any. If it were this color, there'd be a surplus, sufficient, adequate, insufficient, <laughs> and depleted. Wow, that's like absolute clear, isn't it? Mmm. You know what's good for nitrogen? Soybeans and edamame. That fixes nitrogen in the soil, and I'm going to plant that in part of the garden. But oh. I think I'm going to have to find some other way to up the nitrogen sooner than that, though. All right, nitrogen is depleted. Let's look at phosphorus. This is a bluish one. Oh, we got some color. Yeah. How much color? What, what's your guess? You guess first. I would say that's a P3, so it's Up here? Yeah, I agree with her, and again, I'll show you here in a minute. That definitely looks, yeah, that's the closest one, definitely. So we have sufficient amount of phosphorus, something I don't have to go and buy and put in the soil. And the last one is potash, which we're still not sure what it is exactly, right? Yeah. But have we got some? I think we got some. What's your guess? Oh, this is a tough one. Definitely K2 or higher, so adequate or higher. So between K2 and K3? Oh. A little above well, the middle one. Yeah, maybe K3. I feel okay. like it could almost be surplus, but I'm not sure. No, that would be K4. Yeah. Is that too dark? Yeah. I okay. think it's between these two. So it's between adequate and sufficient. So we're good on that. So looks like it's the nitrogens I'm going to have to work on. So here's your own view of the nitrogen test chamber. And on the left side, that is clear. And so it doesn't match up really with any. Maybe the very lowest one depleted. Here's phosphorus. And that's middle to the one above it, we think. So we're in good shape for phosphorus. And the potash, also the color in the test chamber on the left, we think is between the middle one and the one above that, so we're in good shape for potash as well. So to increase the nitrogen, I need to amend the soil. I need to add something to it. Guess what one of the recommendations for increasing your nitrogen is? What I should add? What? Dried blood. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It says here for a 100 square foot area, if you're starting out with depleted nitrogen, 36 ounces of dried blood. <laughs> Where do you go to get that? So I'll see at the garden store what I can find for that. I guess a fertilizer that includes that. People have this problem pretty commonly, having low nitrogen in their soil. Mm -hmm. So it's a common thing. They, they must have good ways to fix it. But you mentioned something about being careful. What was that? Yes. So nitrogen is good for plant growth, mm -hmm. but you need to make sure not to have too much. With nitrogen fertilizers, a lot of it gets washed away meaning into the streams and rivers yeah mm. which then allows more plant growth such as algae and stuff in water which then depletes the amount of oxygen, oxygen. and then you so get red tide and that kind of nasty stuff less ah. hurts fish all that kind of stuff and i think i think can sometimes lead to more acid rain oh i think well, I need more acidic soil. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. So the nitrogen not only helps the plants grow in the garden, if it washes out of the soil and gets into the waterways, then it results in algae growing in the water, and then bad stuff happens with that. So I prefer to put nitrogen in the soil in a more natural way. I wish I had time to plant soybeans first, because they naturally fix nitrogen in the soil in these little nodules on the roots. And so I will be planting some soybeans, but the, my uh, sweet potato slips, they're ready to get going here real soon. So I don't have time to do a crop of soybeans, then take them out and then do the sweet potato. So off to the garden center. If you're going to be starting a garden, which is a fun thing to do, um, and you're curious about finding out about your soil, which is good to find out in advance because you can find out where to go to get 36 ounces of dried blood <laughs> before you plant your plants. Try out the rapid test. You can find out more about this at the link down below this video. Thanks again for your help. Sure. And I'll see you on the next review.